Welcome to Art Starts Explores. I'm Kay, and I work at Art Starts as a gallery coordinator and preparator. I started the Art Starts Explores program three years ago, and I'm excited to bring a version online that can be enjoyed by families across the province. Today we're going to explore the theme of shadows. And what's cool about this theme is that you don't have to make anything to start searching for, playing with, or wondering about shadows. Chances are you're making a shadow right now. Creative people learn about shadows to take better pictures, create drama or mood in pictures or movies in a scene, and sometimes even use them as a character. If you've never joined us for Explorers in the past, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the three rules or guidelines we like to follow. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by listening to how we feel, respect for others by listening and sharing, Respect for the land by acknowledging the nations and indigenous people who have served and continue to serve as guardians and stewards of the land, and by doing our best to be respectful guests as we learn and play here. Second is no expectations. Try not to plan too much before trying something today. If we get a picture on our heads about how something should turn out, we can be disappointed with ourselves when it doesn't. Try practicing surprise and always ask yourself, I wonder what will happen if I... Third is that nothing is for keeps. In the gallery in Vancouver, we like to say, take nothing home with you except your experience. But since many of you are at home now, we challenge you to unmake everything you try today. This means after you finish trying something, try to disassemble or take it apart so you can use it again for something else. Try not to make any completed thing, and whenever possible, pull from your recycling bin to practice. And if it can still be recycled when you're done, put it back. Trying something new doesn't need to make something for keeps. And that's just what we're practicing today. Let's start exploring shadows together. A shadow is a dark area where light is blocked by an object. When light can pass through all the way, like a window, we call an object transparent. When some, but not all, light can pass through, we call an object translucent. When light can't pass through at all, we call an object opaque. On a sunny day, because your body is opaque, the light doesn't travel through your body. Your body blocks the light, which can cause a shadow. To explore opacity, or how much light passes through an object, I've collected the following things. Scissors for cutting paper, some recycled cardboard, whatever you can find, paper in different weights, which just means thickness. For example, tracing paper is thinner than printer paper, which is thinner than watercolor paper or construction paper. Grab whatever you can find. Tape, if you have some. A light source. If you have a desk lamp or a floor lamp that doesn't move, you can always go to your light source once you've made your objects, so leave those there for now. Wax paper or parchment which you'll probably find in the kitchen. Some markers or paint. A piercing tool, like a needle. I use a big thick needle in this video, which isn't that sharp at all, but you could use a sharpened pencil or a nail. And finally, some clear plastic recycling. I got a thin piece of plastic by removing the window from an envelope in the top of a takeout container. Collect different things. Anything you find will be great. Did you explore with us last month for Art Starts Explores Framing? If you didn't get a chance, all our videos are available online on our YouTube channel. Last month, I made a viewfinder, which will be popping up in lots of our Explores videos. They are so useful and worth having around as you explore with us. This week, I'm going to tape some wax paper to my viewfinder to make the paper easier to hold when I explore later. If you don't have a viewfinder, you can just hold it up between two hands, or quickly make a viewfinder out of some extra cardboard. This is our translucent tool. Next, we'll take our clear plastic. Even if your plastic has some marks, scratches, or words embossed on it, that's okay. The important thing is that you can see through it, like you can see the lines through this lid on my cutting mat. Next, Take a marker or some paint and draw some marks. 
Try not to color in the whole thing, but if you do, grab another piece of plastic and make a second object to try. Remember, there are no mistakes when we don't have any expectations. We're just asking ourselves, what happens if... This is our transparent tool. Grab some cardboard. With this piece, try piercing or poking holes in it using a needle or the edge of your scissors. Go slow and always point sharp objects away from you. This part can be tricky, so this is a good time to ask for help from parents, guardians, caretakers, or any adult friends you have helping you explore today. The idea is to poke holes through this thicker material to let light shine through. See what happens with big holes and small holes. Take scissors to your cardboard if you want. Whatever you want to try. I like cardboard that is thin enough you can rip with your hands. It's fun to rip paper and cardboard when you have permission. Finally, do the same thing with different weights of paper. Rip or fold or cut some spaces that light could shine through these materials. The paper and cardboard are our opaque tools. Grab an extra piece of white paper or use a white wall for our background and let's hit the lights. That means let's turn down the lights so we have a darker space. Then pick up and go over to your light source. Before you use any of our cool new tools, try to make shadows with the light on your own. If you can move the light, how does it create shadows in your room, on your body, or on other people with you? What happens when you hold light close to a white piece of paper? When you've tried all the things you can think of, pick up one of your opaque tools, either the cardboard or the paper. Remember, opaque means the light is blocked and can't get through. What do you notice with these tools? What kind of shadows can you make? Next, try using your translucent tool. How does the light change when you shine it through something translucent? How do the shadows you make in this light change? Shine the light through your transparent object. Does the light look the same? What happens when it hits your marker or paint marks? What happens when you move the object close or far from the light? Does it make different shadows? There are lots of ways you can explore shadows, and today we learned how the different ways light travels through or doesn't travel through an object can create and affect a shadow. Be sure to download our resource one-pager this week for additional questions you can ask each other, as well as some words you can use to challenge yourself when you're making shadows. And don't forget, when you're all done playing and exploring, try to take things apart and put them away again so that the only thing that is left behind are the pictures in your brain. Thank you for watching this video today. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. If you're watching this in May 2020, we'll be hosting a live art making session on shadows this weekend where you can make it home and ask questions or watch me practice. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Art Starts. I hope to see you then. Bye.